My name is Oscar Rivera. I'm a Honduran living in Kansas. In many ways, I fell in love with this American state. It is giving me new and different opportunities. Like speaking a little bit of English now, I'm still learning, as you can tell. At the same time, I miss my homeland every day. Let me explain to you how I ended up living here in the Sunflower State, in Kansas. Everything started down there, in Honduras. In 2011, I met Valerie in a hotel around Yohoa Lake. She's a professional photographer that was producing an audio documentary series for High Plains Public Radio, a radio station from Garden City, Kansas. When I met her, she took me to a place that changed my life, Pan American Health Service, an orphanage in Peña Blanca. Here, Valerie took pictures of the kids, and later, she organized an art show in Garden City, Kansas, and sold those photos, and with that money, she bought art supplies and went back to the place and taught some art to the kids. Simple, but at the same time amazing. The kids love it. When I see the passion with which Valerie works to help these children, it's like she invites me to do the same. It inspires me to see the fact that she could have been in Kansas doing any kind of war activity. But she preferred to sell her art to help these children. And that's something that I respect a lot. It started out with our grandfather, our maternal grandfather was a physician, Dr. Steven Youngberg. And he had a hobby. He liked to go donate his free time to give care to patients in Mexico. His clinics were in South Texas and then he'd go care for mostly TB patients. And my grandparents together, they decided to come to Honduras because it was the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere after Haiti. And they actually moved here in November of 1960. Eventually what he saw was there was a lot of childhood malnutrition and that that was a very easily preventable or treatable situation that could be deadly. So that's how we ended up, and we still do, treat malnourished children. So the nutrition rehab is the main thing of what we do. And then we also have the home for the children that have been abandoned or that for some reason just aren't able to go home. And those kids are being educated. The younger ones are getting bilingual education. So, And then we also have technical education, vocational education for the community. They're usually people from lower income families that really need an alternative education to get into the workforce as soon as possible. Before meeting Valerie, I had never shared time with children in this way. As I said before, this place is very special for Valerie and I. The time I spend with Valerie and the children taught me how great it feels to help other people without expecting anything. Hey, amigo, toma una foto. Especially if it's about children. This is something that I will always thank Valerie for. Sharing time and love with a child is refreshing for the soul. After this experience, Valerie took me to her home in Kansas, a very different place from my country. In Kansas, I met a group of ladies who every year makes a mission trip supported by their church and their community in Wallace County. In 2015, they prepared a trip to Honduras and in June of that year, Katrina, Lynn, Renee, Trudy and Lorelai went to Honduras to live an unforgettable experience for them. This time, one of the missions of these ladies was to help the children in Pan American. Valerie and I were very happy to be able to return to this place two years later. With the help of our friends, Valerie once again took material to the children to create art, an activity that they enjoy a lot. For our friends from Kansas, this has been a blessing moment. 
they have earned all my respect for what they are doing in Honduras. In Honduras, there are more than 15,000 children living on the streets of San Pedro Sula in Tegucigalpa. So there it is so nice to know that there are places like Pan American. So I'm very happy that people like Valerie and these ladies take their own time to come to help these children who need it so much. The most special thing about all this is to see and feel the honest love that children show each time they are visited, but it is more difficult to say goodbye. Now it's time to go back to San Pedro Sula. From there we are going to our new destination, a very mystical place. We are going to Copan. A beautiful Mayan sign, but I will tell you about it in the next episode.